Hello everyone, nice to see you guys. How are you doing? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Normal. Hi. How are you? Good afternoon. I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> okay, good afternoon, everyone. So <clears throat> short recall of our uh, previous lecture. So we uh, introduced such a concept as uh, electric field flux and uh, uh, explained what it is, how we can calculate it, which is actually uh, assuming um, any distribution of electrical field means not uniform. Uh, we uh, need to integrate the uh, dot product of electric field vector and a uh, small element area vector, which is small element area times um, normal unit vector to this um, surface. So um, that is general definition of um, electric field flux. And uh, uh, also we um, discussed in details uh, electric field flux through a uh, closed uh, surface. So it means uh, um, some surface which divides uh, space in uh, internal and external uh, space. Um, that is important uh, concept because um, it is uh, used in uh, Gauss law, uh, which we also um, discussed uh, and introduced uh, last time. Uh, so that means that we have um, equality between the electric field flux through a closed uh, surface, which in this case can be also called as Gaussian surface. Um, and that is equal, uh, equal with uh, the electric charge divided by epsilon naught. Uh, and this electric charge should be enclosed inside this um, surface. So there is a direct relationship between these two parameters, and that is quite a useful um, feature, which we can use um, already in our today's discussion. So we will continue um, a little bit, um, consider this Gaussian law in more details, and then we will uh, practice with uh, applying Gaussian law in order to determine electric field uh, vector uh, in the space around some um, distributed um, discontinued uh, some continuous um, electric uh, charge. So in other ways, it would be quite difficult, challenging to um, do these calculations. However, if we know already uh, Gauss law and can properly uh, apply it, means properly apply that we should have some um, certain conditions, which we will discuss today, uh, then this task becomes quite um, easy and straightforward. So it's very neat approach to um, simplify calculation of electric field created by distributed uh, charges when we have certain uh, symmetry uh, cases. So with this, probably I will switch to um, our slides. And we can proceed. So um, again, to recall just what I have said, um, we have shown during last lecture that um, integral over closed surface of electric field vector times the um, A vector uh, is equal to electric charge. We can maybe put it in, like inside this enclosed surface, um, divided by epsilon naught. So this is the uh, Gauss um, law, and uh, that what we will um, continue working um, during today's lecture. So we already have shown that. It doesn't matter which shape of the closed surface 
we deal with, uh, if it's a symmetric sphere or it's some arbitrary shape, um, this law works in all cases. Uh, so now, uh, but before we always considered some electric charge inside this closed surface. So which actually creates this um, electric field flux. So now let us assume such a situation. We have an arbitrary shape closed surface and uh, some positive charge, which is located outside this closed surface. So obviously it will create electric field. There will be electric field lines, which will go into this closed surface. And also it will go out. We know from definition of uh, electric field flux through a closed surface, that it is defined by the net um, number of electric field uh, lines which go out from the surface. So we uh, have uh, all lines which go out from the surface minus those lines which uh, go in the surface. And uh, eventually we can see what is the net um, electric field flux. Uh, defined by the difference of these two. So in this case, as you see, it's obvious we have equal um, number of entering um, electric field lines uh, and the same number of um, uh, those electric field lines which go outside from the uh, closed surface. So it means the electric field flux of such configuration will be equal to zero. So if we have um, a system of uh, electric charges, which create obviously in the same point of space of our interest, um, some electric field vector, so we need to sum up these electric field vectors um, created by each of the charge and uh, determine the resultant electric field vector uh, and use it in this integral to um, calculate the um, electric field flux. So if we have integral over closed surface of this resultant electric field, that will be according to superposition, means that we, um, in a vector way, add electric field vectors um, in order to uh, determine the resultant electric field vector. So we have integral of E1 vector created by some charge Q1, then E2 vector plus, and then we have some En vector. Depends how many electric charges we have, dA. So that could be quite a challenging task, as you already may notice, because um, there could be many charges, and these charges can be uh, distributed in a different, different ways. So that would be not easy task to calculate this electric field flux. However, since we know the uh, Gauss law, uh, and that gives us relationship, direct relationship between the um, electric field flux and the electric charge inside uh, Gauss um, or closed surface, uh, we can apply it and uh, easily uh, determine electric field fluxes in different uh, case. For instance, let's say we have such a um, set of closed surfaces. We have some arbitrary shape um, closed surface S1. Then we have uh, 
one more S two uh, and S three. Now let us place some charges here in this configuration of closed uh, surfaces. Let's say we have Q1, some positive charge inside surface S1. Then we have some charges, positive Q2 and negative Q3 inside this closed surface S2. We don't have anything inside surface S3. And here we have some positive charge, Q, uh, Q4, which is placed outside of all of these uh, closed surfaces. So we have this uh, case. And now the question will be, what will be electric field fluxes through each of these closed surfaces? So let's say P1. So any ideas? What would you suggest? So we have a closed surface as one and some charge Q1, positive charge, uh, which is uh, placed in this closed surface. According to uh, Gauss law, what does it mean in terms of electric field flux through surface S1? Uh, it will be Q1 divided by epsilon. Yes, you're right. It will be Q1 divided by epsilon. Naught. So that is uh, clear because we can just look at this um, nice uh, equation and that actually tells us everything. So we do not need um, to do any other calculations. Uh, what is interesting with surface S2? So any suggestions with um, electric field flux F2 through closed surface? Zero. That is equal to zero in that case, if Q1 in absolute value will be equal to Q2. So that is possible. Um, if these positive and negative charges are equal between each other in magnitude, but opposite in sign, they will cancel out each other's electric field flux and the total electric field flux will be equal to zero. So uh, in this case, when absolute values are equal, we get, as you said, um, electric field flux equal to zero. However, in um, general case, because they can be not equal in absolute values, we can also write that P2 is equal to Q1 plus Q2 divided by epsilon naught. So depends on their magnitudes uh, and signs, um, we will get uh, the result. And in case if their magnitudes are equal and uh, signs are opposite, we will get zero. <clears throat> However, I would like to maybe, uh, since you already mentioned about this specific case, when it's equal to zero, I would like to highlight one important moment. Uh, electric field flux is equal to zero, but it doesn't mean that at each point of this closed surface, electric, like net electric field created by these two charges will be equal to zero. So they just compensate each other's electric field fluxes, and that's why we have electric field flux equal to zero, not because electric field vector at each point of the surface is equal to zero. So that is important to um, understand. 
And uh, again, it is really nice to um, apply this uh, Gauss law because um, otherwise it would be a challenge to calculate electric, like resultant electric field uh, vector at each point of this surface. It would take quite a lot of efforts and time. However, we don't need to do that. We just um, operate with the sign and absolute values uh, like magnitudes of electric charges enclosed in this surface S2. Now we have case S3 and F3 will be equal zero. Yes, you are right. Zero. We don't have any charges inside. Means uh, in this equation here in numerator, we can put zero. So the electric field flux will be equal to zero. Um, the question is, uh, what about this charge Q4? Will it have some contribution towards electric field fluxes through any of these um, surfaces? No. No, because it's placed outside the closed surfaces S1, S2, and S3. So uh, if there would be some hypothetical low surface S4, uh, then of course it would contribute to the, uh, to the uh, electric field flux through this surface S4. Um, someone is asking about lectures, uh, like recorded lectures. So I upload them on uh, uh, this uh, on YouTube. So uh, there is a link in the welcome uh, uh, letter. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you can easily find them. So I try to upload them uh, in short time after each lecture. Okay, so now we already have a feeling how we can um, in uh, such general cases um, apply and get some advantages of applying uh, Gauss law. So it makes our life a bit easier. However, the uh, most interesting way to apply Gauss law is to uh, determine electric field um, uh, close to some distance distributed system of electric uh, charges. So in order to do that in a very efficient way, there should be some uh, conditions met. And the first uh, condition is, like the, the main actually condition, is to have some symmetry of the um, closed surface which we operate with respect to this distributed electric charge. Um, so there are three um, specific conditions which should be satisfied. So the value uh, of the electric field uh, should be constant over the at least a part of this closed surface. So that is important because we don't need to integrate the uh, distribution of electric field, we consider it as constant along, like over some surface, um, part of the surface of this closed uh, surface. Then electric field vectors and um, this uh, small area vector, dA vector, which we uh, define as area times uh, normal vector, unit norm normal vector to the surface have to be either parallel or per perpendicular. So that also is an important factor which uh, allows us uh, to get rid of this uh, vector product. So we either have zero or just product of two um, magnitudes of 
these vectors. So we don't need to deal with um, their orientation with respect to each other, <clears throat> if they are parallel or perpendicular. And uh, um, another option is that electric field uh, is zero over part of the closed surface. So it doesn't mean that all these conditions should um, simultaneously be applicable to each part of the closed surface, but uh, at least one of these conditions should be applied to uh, each of the um, parts of this uh, closed surface. So to be more specific and make it more clear to you, let us do a um, bunch of examples how we can apply Gauss law in order to determine electric field of distributed charges. So first, let us consider our charged sphere. So we have a charged sphere. And uh, uh, there is some, let's say, charge U on the surface of this sphere. And uh, in order to, so we are interested in the electric, the value of electric field at some point uh, at the distance R from the center of this sphere. So in order to determine it, we can consider some closed surface, spherical surface, which repeats. So it, it is a, a symmetrical um, sphere, um, a symmetrical case, because we have two spheres. We have sphere, uh, spherical distribution of electric um, charge, because electric charge is distributed on the surface of the sphere. And also we have a, a spherical a closed surface, which uh, we take with the radius r. Uh, what is the um, distance from the center of the sphere to the point uh, where we want to determine electric field? So now uh, We need to um, determine the electric field flux through this uh, closed surface, spherical surface with the radius r. So electric field flux is equal to integral over the surface E vector times dA vector. Uh, since the uh, at any point of this surface, because of the symmetry, um, electric field vector is parallel to unit uh, normal vector. Uh, we uh, can substitute it with just product of absolute values E and dA. So in that case, uh, we can also apply Gauss law and claim that uh, we have total electric charge divided by epsilon naught. So um, the electric field flux through this dashed closed surface um, or Gauss surface, we can call it, um, is equal to the total electric charge inside this um, sphere, a spherical surface. Uh, divided by epsilon naught. That is coming from Gauss law. So now <clears throat> let us uh, get the uh, integral. Um, so this will be integral of E times dA. Uh, since the distance um, r, this radius, doesn't change to any point of this sphere. It's the same from the center. 
means that electric field will be constant. So we can take it out from the integral. So it will be E integral dA. And uh, we also know the equation for uh, the area of the sphere. So because this integral, it is actually, we mentioned it before on, during our previous discussion, this is equal to the uh, area of the closed surface. In our case, we have a sphere, means that we have E times four pi r square. That stands for the uh, surface area of the sphere. And that is equal to Q divided by epsilon naught. So now we can determine from this equation, electric field in this point, uh, which is placed at distance R from the center of the sphere. That will be E is equal to uh, Q total charge accumulated on this sphere divided by or pi epsilon not r square. And uh, uh, assuming that ke is equal to one over four pi epsilon not, we can um, write this equation in a bit more compact form. So it will be ke times q total charge divided by r square. So we have this, <coughs> Equation and uh, by the way, it is um, similar to uh, the equation which we got for electric field of a point uh, created by a point charge, assuming that all charge on the sphere is located in the center of this sphere. So, um, taking into account this. Uh, symmetry of the sphere, uh, these results are quite similar to each other. So with this, we can go to a bit um, more interesting example, specifically when we have an um, uh, infinitely long uh, rod, which is electrically charged, so which carries, let's say, some positive charge with some linear density lambda. <clears throat> Maybe let's go to a new slide and uh, make some drawings for this case. So we have some rod which is positively charged and here is lambda, linear density of positive charge per unit length. Uh, then we will create some uh, closed cylindric surface around this rod. Uh, since it's positively charged, electric field vectors will go from it perpendicular to the surface of this rod since we consider um, infinitely long one. So there, these are electric field vectors. And now let us consider this closed a cylindric sphere. So we have some length of this cylinder. Let's be L. And here we will consider some small area of the cylinder. So this will be electric field vector perpendicular to this surface means parallel to its normal unit vector, so parallel to dA vector. 
And uh, now let us determine electric field flux uh, through this closed surface. So uh, electric field flux will be equal to um, constant electric field. Why constant? Because uh, each uh, small area of this side surface of the uh, cylinder will be at the same distance from the rod because it has this um, symmetry with respect to the rod, which goes through the axis of this cylinder. And uh, um, that's why it will be constant. Then it will be integral over dA. And uh, um, that will be just area of this side surface. Uh, we do not consider uh, surfaces of the top, like bottom and top surfaces. Uh, and maybe someone will tell me what is the reason for that. Because they are like uh, perpendicular. Yes, you are right. So the you, the um, normal vector for these surfaces will be perpendicular to electric field vector means that electric field flux through the surfaces will be uh, equal to zero. So that is uh, very good because it makes our life easier. <clears throat> so in that case, uh, we just need to know the area of the side uh, surface of this uh, cylinder. So in that case, it will be E times uh, area of the side uh, surface will be uh, equal to uh, 2 pi r. So that is r radius of the cylinder. So we have length of the uh, base, 2 pi r times l. Yes, 2 pi r times l. And according to uh, Gauss law, it will be equal to total electric charge inside this cylinder divided by epsilon naught. So what will be total electric charge inside this cylinder? We actually have all information for that. So we have linear distribution of electric charge on this rod, and we have length of the cylinder. So if we have a, if you multiply length of the cylinder and linear distribution of um, uh, this electric charge density, uh, we will get the total charge, which is accumulated on the rod and closed by this surface. So that will be uh, L times uh, lambda divided by epsilon naught. So eventually uh, we get the following equation to make it more clear here. It will be um, E times 2 pi R L equal to L times lambda divided by epsilon naught. So we can cancel out L and uh, we get the expression for the electric field uh, around this uh, uniformly charged, infinitely long uh, rod. So it will be lambda charge linear distribution, so charge per uh, unit length divided by 2 pi epsilon naught r or will be 2 times k e times lambda divided by r. So <coughs> we see that there are two parameters which will define electric field um, next to, in the space next to uh, 
uh, this charged rod. It will be uh, linear charge density distribution on this rod. Um, so it will be proportional to it and reversally proportional to the distance from the rod. Uh, one more example to make uh, it uh, more diverse with different cases. Uh, let us consider also infinitely large charged surface with some uh, density, surface density of charge signal, let's say also positive. So how can we determine electric field next to this surface? We can also apply here Gauss law and uh, uh, for that purpose, we want to uh, build this closed surface in such way as shown on this picture. So we have one half of the cylinder from one side and another half of this cylinder from another side. So here, we have some overlap of the cylinder with our um, positively charged surface. So now we uh, take into account that this surface is infinitely large uh, or in other uh, aspects to be like more close to reality it's a large charged surface, and we want to determine electric field in the vicinity of this surface. So the distance from the uh, charge plate to this point where we want to determine electric field is much smaller than the size of the plate. And that also will um, be true. Uh, taking into account this uh, uh, facts, electric field vectors of this charged uh, surface will be uh, perpendicular uh, to the surface. So this is electric field vector. And they will go in both directions. So now we have surface A uh, let's call not A1 and A2, so we can call uh, the top and bottom surface as A and the side surface, let's call it A prime. So since we have perpendicular normal vector and electric field vector for the surface A prime, we do not take this into consideration because it will give us zero. There is no electric field flux through these surfaces. However, there will be um, electric field flux through surfaces A, like bottom and top of this uh, cylinder. So electric field flux will be equal. Uh, and we see since um, there's different directions of electric field vectors, so um, electric field flux is through both sides of this um, cylinder, like base and top, uh, they will be positive. Because here we have n vector, here we have n vector, and in both cases, they will be parallel to the electric field vector. So that's why total uh, electric field flux will be equal to two times E times a. So we have one flux uh, E times A, another flux E times A, we get two times E times A. And uh, this E is constant because uh, at like each point of this surface is at the same distance from the uh, charged uh, surface. The same can be 
applied also to these surveys. So according to uh, Gauss law, that will be equal to internal electric charge divided by epsilon naught. In this case, what will be the electric charge, which is enclosed by this uh, surface, uh, cylindric surface? Any ideas, suggestions? Area uh, multiplied by sigma. Yes, so we have here overlap, and that is the area of the charge surface, which is enclosed in this uh, cylindric surface. We know it's uniformly charged. So if we multiply area, which is the same as area of these two surfaces, which we consider, um, so area A times sigma will give us the charge inside this closed surface. So that is equal to sigma times A, uh, divided by epsilon naught. So now we can easily get the expression for um, electric field um, next to uh, infinitely large, uh, uniformly charged plate. That will be sigma divided by two epsilon naught. What is interesting here we see that electric field in this particular case is determined only by density of like surface density of electric charge on this plate. It does not depend on the distance from their plate, means uh, the electric field will be uniform at any distance from this infinitely charged um, plate and will be determined by this simple equation, sigma divided by two epsilon naught, where epsilon naught is permittivity of free space, a universal constant. So summarizing our today's discussion, we uh, further continued to uh, consider uh, features of Gauss law. Uh, specifically, we have shown that the electric field flux created uh, through a closed surface created by electric charge, which is placed outside this surface will be equal to zero. If we have a number of electric charges inside a closed surface, we need to calculate the net electric charge. And that will uh, that is exactly what will determine electric field flux. If net electric charge will be equal to zero means that we have zero electric field flux. However, um, we need to highlight that uh, it doesn't mean that at each point of the closed surface, electric field vector will be equal to zero. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, and the main feature of Gauss law, we don't need to calculate this uh, electric field vector at each point of the closed surface, uh, which can be quite difficult. But what we need to know only that uh, how much of electric charge is enclosed in this surface. Uh, then if we apply certain symmetry uh, cases uh, and uh, uh, satisfy these three rules, uh, which we mentioned for uh, application of uh, Gauss law, when um, electric field vector should be either parallel or perpendicular to the normal uh, vector of, of the surface, uh, some elements of the closed surface. Also, uh, electric field vector should be constant at least at one uh, part of the closed surface. And uh, also electric field vector should be equal to zero at one of the part of this closed surface. So if for all, uh, parts of the closed surface, at least one condition is valid, then we can um, take an advantage of applying Gauss law in order to calculate electric field next to the uh, distributed uh, charge uh, charges. 
And we have shown how this can be done uh, on the example of a, a charge distributed over a sphere, charge distributed over an infinite uh, plate, and also infinite uh, long, infinitely long rod. So with this, we finish our discussion today. If you have questions, you are welcome. Very much. Uh, yeah, sure. Could you one more time explain part with uh, Q in uh, sigma and the charge? You mean uh, how how we determine the charge enclosed in this cylinder? Uh, yes. How to mm -hmm. yes sigma. Okay. Yeah. So um, let's say we can just take this cylinder out with, uh, let's assume that this cylinder cuts a hole in this surface. So we have our cylinder. And here in the middle, we have piece of this surface. So we literally cut it a hole with the cylinder and it's this piece of the, uh, plate is now inside the cylinder. So we know that per unit area of this uh, plate, we have charge Q. So if we know the area, and this area is equal to the area of this, like side area of the cylinder, that's area A, then everything what we need to know the total charge enclosed in this cylinder is to multiply uh, sigma electric charge per unit area times area okay. of this uh, part which we cut, uh, part of the plate which we cut it and kept inside the cylinder. Uh, so that is total electric charge of the, which is accumulated in, uh, like enclosed in this uh, cylindric surface. Okay, I just didn't know about sigma. No, I yeah, okay, yeah. So sigma is uh, uh, units for sigma will be Coulomb per square meter. So if we multiply sigma by area, uh, so we have Coulomb times square meter and here square meter, we cancel them out and eventually we get just electric charge Coulomb. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay, guys. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Have a nice day. Goodbye. See you next time. Thank you. Thank goodbye. You. Goodbye. Thank, Thank you. Goodbye. goodbye.